thanks for joining this session. So over the next 20 to 30 minutes, I will be walking you guys through uh, some of the strategies of, um, you know, where we are headed, where the industry is headed in terms of, you know, cloud consumption, where did we start, where we are now and where we are headed into the future. What is the demand like? And what are some of the problems that we are facing when we are going to these clouds? What are the industry, uh, the enterprises, uh, what issues they are facing? And what is the solution to that? And how we can tackle this as we explore the cloud consumption in, in the coming years. Fair enough? So let's move on to the next slide. Yeah, this is the state of the global cloud spend as of today, right? If you remember back in the 2000s, um, and I'm presuming most of you guys are, are aspiring, um, you know, professionals or, or uh, you know, students are just getting there. So if, I, I mean, you know, the 2000s may be, you know, dinosaur years for you guys, but trust me, that's where people like Ram, me started off our careers way back in the 90s, uh, mid 90s. But if you look at it in 2000, it was all data center centric infrastructure services or IT. You know, what we used to do is we used to buy all the assets then, the servers, storage, um, backup, all these devices. We used to house it in large, huge data centers. Today, Amazon uses huge warehouses to store their, their boxes and their merchandise. We used to have those type of data centers where we just used to have servers, storage, and, and all the other gear. And we used to um, supply, uh, and we used to manage the infrastructure through that. Now that was a fixed cost capex uh, spend. We used to buy all the infrastructure as a capital expenditure, depreciate it over a period of time. And then whoever wanted to consume that, we used to just provision them uh, servers, you know, storage, uh, and so on and so forth, and then just give it to them so that they could build their apps on that and deploy their apps. Now, cut to um, in the mid 2000s, what happened is web companies started to come into picture. The the uh, the internet started to uh, gain momentum, and we started to see traction, and that's when we needed web technologies to start developing applications which were agile, which could be spun up immediately and spun down immediately too. So that give, gave a big challenge to the data center, um, uh, you know, way of doing business because um, all that was CapEx spent and we could not do a consumption-based model. So in order to counter this, in 2006, what Amazon did was they came up with their first way of, you know, uh, uh, an equivalent of a server. They called it EC2. And they also advocated the, the developers to come up with agile, lean um, technology for developing applications. So they used, um, um, Agile methods. They wanted everybody to be lean uh, in a lean IT, and and then the DevOps. The term DevOps was born. DevOps is basically development and operations, something in between those. So that's that that whole concept was born in the mid 2000s. Now, where are we today with with the cloud uh, spend? If you look at it. The major cloud players today are AWS, Google, GCP or Google Cloud, and we also have Microsoft Azure. Other than this, there are multiple thousands of other players. Some of them you would have heard of, some of them you, have, you wouldn't have heard of as well. But that's a huge space. And today, the current spend as of today on 
cloud and cloud related hosting products is 200 billion okay now this is going to explode we're already in 2021 in the next one year you will see the public cloud spend just jump up to 20 uh, 360 billion so almost doubling year on year right that's the way the cloud is going to explode and this is what we are up against okay which is a challenge but if you look at it from the other side of the coin it is also an opportunity for us it's opportunity for people like us people like you guys to actually pursue a career in this as we start spending more and more on the cloud what are some of the challenges that we are going to see is more and more you know with the cloud, what happens is you can easily, within minutes, spin up an instance and start developing apps on that. You don't have to pay big bills. So what happens is uh, it is consumption based, so everybody can afford it. It is become it's not like in the 2000s where only large enterprises could afford application development, even a one-off if, if you tomorrow one of you starts to become a freelance developer and you want to develop an app you don't need to go and spin up huge infrastructure to spend huge money just go to aws punch in your credit card there in simple five to six steps you can have a server you can have storage spun up for you with as little spend as you know a hundred fifty dollars or hundred dollars a month which you can afford right because you're spending um is spending all these effort in developing apps so what what's happening to this uh kind of a behavior is the cloud companies are becoming rich and rich why are they becoming rich and rich is because they are um people like us are spinning up resources consuming them and paying them. For us, it's pennies to a dollar, right? We just pay our monthly AWS bill will be $50, $100. We don't care because we are developing apps. But look at billions of people trying to do it. And we are not technology people. We are not infrastructure people when we're trying to spin it. So most often than not, what happens is we face issues like we spin up the wrong resources. We spin up cloud heavy resources which consumes a lot of uh, energy which is not required right and which may end up we may end up paying more uh, money to the cloud company one issue is wrong resources then unused resources as well we use these resources and we pay them on a per second basis consumption basis so it is up to us to develop, uh, to, to adopt all agile and lean technologies or lean processes. So you don't have unused resources and you, you start paying for them. For example, if you're doing development related work or testing related work, you want to test from Monday to Friday. You have your testers on Monday to Friday. You start and, and you finish. You don't need these resources on Saturdays and Sundays. Why do you pay the cloud company for Saturdays and Sundays? Because it's idle. What you can do is you can have good backup and snapshot strategy. So you can take snapshot backup and then you spin down the resources as soon as your share, your devil, your testers leave, leave the office and then spin up those resources again. It's one hour before the testers come into office on Monday morning. So that way you're not paying for these idle resources on Saturdays and Sundays. That is just one example. There are thousands of business cases where you would spin down and spin up resources. That way you are countering this issue of not paying for unused resources. The next thing is oversighting. Now, when you start to develop an app, you're a developer. You don't know much about technology. So the biggest thing about this is, you know, all clouds advocate one thing. It's called the well-architected 
infrastructure. So well-architected infrastructure framework is you don't oversize your resources because you start paying more. You try to find out how much of consumption there is, what's going to be the traffic. So this is a kind of, a, a, this is the engineering. This is what engineering is all about, where you predict what the consumption is going to be like and then provision resources. Most often they're not. What happens is nobody spends that upfront, uh, upfront time in planning. They say, okay, I assume that 1,000 or 10,000 users are going to hit my website. So let me oversize it. Let me say, let me take a factor of 2.5x or, or 3x and I will oversize the resources. And then after a month or two, when I see the traffic, I can adjust accordingly. I can downsize. So they start off with a larger capacity upfront, but then they get stuck with so many other priorities. They never get back to resizing them or, or right sizing them. So what happens is you end up paying more. You don't realize because these bills are small, but at the end of the day, if you look at the whole, the small, every penny adds up when it comes to cloud consumption. But at the end of the day, you see that this is huge overspend because of oversizing. Now, again, the next uh, issue that we have as developers is the the use of uh, you know old technologies. Today, there are newer technologies, newer uh, you know, coding um, frameworks and technologies that is in place, especially microservices, which is the best suited for cloud-based um, development and architecture. So cloud uh, microservices-based architecture uh, assumes that you are, you are agile, you're lean, you're not spending more. The way you you call your applications for the front end and the back end is so optimized that there is no way of using the wrong resources, using unused resources, or even oversizing. You right size. That's the right development approach. People forget to do this, and that causes the issue of overspending. Right? Next is storage and data protection. Again, the cloud companies are very, very, um, you know, uh, careful, and I would say uh, very clever in the way they strategize their 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 whole. Um, uh, sorry, I missed one part, which is purchase approach. Right? I'll come to it. Let Let me talk about storage and data protection first. So, um, when when they're very clever in terms of pricing their storage and data protection. So they don't charge anything for you to save into AWS, but when you're reading anything out of out of the cloud, they charge you for it. And it's it's penny. It's it's a fraction of a penny for the data size that you read, especially when you're looking at big data, especially when you're looking at uh, the newer technologies like machine learning. And if you build those machine learning models the amount of data that you egress is huge and that adds up. And that's that's why it's very important for us to architect it well so that you don't incur the extra spend. Coming to purchase approach is every cloud has uh, different ways of um, you know buying their infrastructure if you go to the cloud. The easiest way to spin up one thing is you go and on demand you can you can buy a server, you can buy some storage, and so on. But if you know your consumption, you can. there are strategies where you can go to, from on-demand instances, you can go to something called reserved instances. As the name suggests, you're reserving some space in the Amazon cloud for you to consume, and you are committing to that spend over a year or two years or three years. Back. And the best part of it is, the same resources that you are buying, if you buy on demand, if you're paying a um, hundred dollars for that, when you when you buy the same resources again in a reserved instance 
strategy, you pay just $60, sometimes $50, up to 50% savings is what you can get. And there are other strategies like savings plans, part instances, and so on and so forth. I will not delve into this. This, is, this topic itself is, is a huge undertaking, right? When you talk, start discussing this, I can discuss for hours together on one single topic, one single point here. But then long story short, if you do this, then you can, you can actually save a lot of money. You can, you can spend, right? And this, this unnecessary spend can be reduced. Now, moving again, connectivity and ba bandwidth, I talked about storage and data protection. The same thing applies to the, the connectivity and bandwidth, the way you store data into AWS and how you retrieve data, it all matters. Bear in mind, any cloud, whether it's AWS, GCP, or, or my, uh, Azure, or uh, Oracle Cloud, any cloud, they don't charge you a penny or a dime for you writing data into them and saving them, the, only the storage cost. But when you start reading that data from them into some other applications or anything, that's called egress of data, that's when they charge you. And these charges are so minuscule that you say it's okay, but then the amount of data that traverses is huge. So you end up getting very, very fat monthly bills, which will soon, if you don't control it, will explode right in your face. Again, uh, the other source of the issue is lack of automation. We, I mean, I mean, analytics, which is lack of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. There are not enough tools in the market today. There are, it's just starting today, but um, overall, there are not enough tools in the market today, which will help you to analyze these spends and reduce these spends, okay? And lack of automation is, there is um, no focus around uh, around financial aspects of spending on the cloud. So there is no focus on, um, you know, keeping the right kind of uh, um, you know, resources that you use and using them only when required. So all this will contribute to your increase in your cloud spend. And not only that, the most important thing, let's assume you had all the nine things, you put strategies in place and you address all the nine issues. The 10th issue is the point, is the most important point, which is decision making. More often than not, if you're a one man army, you know, right? If you're spinning up, you, you're the, you're the boss, you control everything. You can take decisions on the fly and, and take these, but talk about Enterprises which are a billion dollar, five billion, ten billion. There are there are thousands of people working in an organization. So decision making is very very slow. Any decision that involves finance, money in large enterprises needs to go through multiple levels of approval, and sometimes the need to explain, you know, what you're doing to finance people. Nothing against the finance guys, but but they are very good in what they do in saving costs, but they don't understand the technology part of it, which is why discussing and del deliberating and decision making becomes slow. And who gains because of this? The 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 more you delay in decision making, the more the cloud companies benefit because they they are you're just paying them for nothing right so all these points are very important these are the issues that not only small enterprises but large enterprises you know multi-billion dollar enterprises they are facing these one of these or many of these issues which is leading to their exploding cloud bills i'd like to take a pause and see if Anybody has any questions here? Uh, Raghunath, you can go on. We can uh, handle questions at the end. I'll, I'll deal with it. Okay. Um, 
Ram, you also let me know how we're doing on fly on time. I just don't want to because I can speak forever and ever on these and on these topics. Um, we have we have twenty minutes uh, to wind up, so you can you can take your time and you know uh, run us through the entire pro, uh, slides. Okay, sounds good. So so moving on. Now we understood what's the source of the issue. How do we tackle this issue? How do we ensure that when we are doing this? we are spending right we are not unnecessarily making you know the sundar pichai the 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 satya nadellas richer than what they are supposed to be right so what's the solution the solution is something called spin offs now spin offs is something a term that gartner has actually coined and it's becoming a very fast uh, adopt uh, adopted strategy for cloud spending today multiple enterprises are lo- are doing this what is finops finops is a department which is essentially a practice of bringing together finance technology and business teams in an enterprise to master the unit economics of cloud spend and thereby gaining business advantage okay now what this means let me break this up is typically when you're dealing with 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 cloud you, or or it it's just technology technology people want the best of the resources that is out there the fastest of resources they don't care about money okay the business they want the apps to be developed fast and it is it is hosted fast so that they can start making money the finance team is their main goal is to see how to reduce the spend reduce the cost all these three people if they work in silos they have conflicting targets to achieve objectives to achieve so the the finance wants to spend less and less the technology guy wants the best uh technology so they want to spend more and more the business wants apps to be developed faster and faster which means do it fast get whatever there is make sure that the cloud that the apps are developed fast and we start making money so all these three conflicting departments if they work in silos then you will see what we are seeing today an increase and exploding cloud bill finops talks about all these three departments coming together and working as one cohesive team so that you can actually develop a financial operating model for the cloud you can bring about a cultural change and deliver financial and operational control for the enterprise and you can thereby with all these three silos working together as one cohesive unit you can have accountability for all the cloud spend okay how do we do this the finops team is like a, a tiger team or a tax team which comes together which consists of people from engineering operations infrastructure which means the it guys the the developers they also have business owners or the product owners they have executive leadership buy in so you have your cto cio or ceo also blessing this and you have the finance department also playing playing into this all these team all these people put together form what is called a finops team and they will to together attack the cloud spend and optimize them so that's how that's the solution for for, for doing this the next is what is the finops life cycle first of all it it it's called a three step cycle which is cyclic and repetitive so first thing what you do is you stay informed first you need to get visibility of all your cloud spend and where it, where it is allocated so that the the key things out there is transparency in your cloud spend so you start getting your bills detect any variations or anomalies in your in your spend and try to identify them get develop a strategy or a process to 
show back or a char or charge back since you have different departments and different businesses if somebody is actually spinning up an app you need to devise a strategy to charge them back for that app which means you need to get into unit economics which is a a whole you know subject on its own right and then you need to be able to budget and forecast you need to know what the business wants you need to know what the finance wants and if you have those up front then you can budget and you can forecast your spend and thereby develop strategies to control your spend and then once you get to inform the next stage is to optimize once you know where you're spending then you can think about optimizing or right sizing or optimizing your utilization by right sizing not over sizing but reduce it to right size you get automation in place so that uh, like i explained in terms of uh, testing you test only on monday through friday your so if your developers work monday through friday that's when the systems are on saturday and sunday it's switched off so you have automation in place to do that that way you can save money and you can go to workload placement which is move the workloads into cloud then shut them down move back into your data center or whatever have you so that way you can do this or buying strategies like going for savings plans or reserve instances or spot instances that's how you optimize once you optimize that then you operate then you build a continuous improvement plan and you develop your operational strategies according to that you make finance as your culture across the enterprise it's not just a finance guy who has to bother about money it's the developer who has to bother about money he knows how much he has to spend it's also the business owner says he understands and he's not crazy in his demands like i need an app to be developed and i need it yesterday it's not going to happen if that if that's needed then you have to spend 10 times the resources so to so develop that as a culture and then you collaborate between all the teams thereby getting this one cohesive uh, team to reduce your cloud spend then you develop something called unit economics so you know each unit how much to charge and how do you charge back to the person who's actually consuming it and that will help us increase speed of delivery the business is happy the finance is happy because we're spending less the the it teams are happy because they have achieved what they wanted to achieve and all these things will help us to speed up our delivery of our applications and also bring value to the business all right moving on how to mature so when we talk about finops practices we there are three stages that that industry talks about that gartner talks about as well it says you can't do everything on day one you cannot boil the ocean okay you need to have it in three phases what they say is short term medium term and long term which is in the short term you learn how to crawl just like a baby when he when when a toddler starts to um to move around right um first they will start crawling then then they will get up on their feet and start walking and then they will start running right the so same way so when you want to implement pinup in your organization you cannot run on day one it's going to be detrimental to your business it's going to be detrimental to and you will basically fail so what 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 basically um you know the the great thing to advocate is you look at crawl there are strategies to crawl the crawl phase you identify which phase you are what strategies you have and then you develop those spin off capabilities capabilities being develop an account strategy develop you know tagging of all your resources into different departments get visibility for all the cloud spend develop strategies to charge back or at least show back 
come up with budgets by departments and say, hey, I'm going to spend only X amount of money per quarter. And then if you have these budgets, then you can develop forecasts for, uh, uh, according to these budgets and start to stay within budget. And then use strategies like reserve instances and, and finally use automation, AI and ML to, to remove these underutilized resources and save money. So how do we implement this? How do we start to crawl, right, uh, in an enterprise? So to start with, you should get at least one person in an enterprise that will focus on the financial impact of your cloud environment. Make this an official. It cannot be a part-time role. It cannot be something, somebody from finance who will look at this because a finance guy will not understand the technology. It cannot be only a technology guy because he does not understand the cloud spend or he does not care about the, the spend. He just wants the best and the greatest. Doesn't matter how, how much it costs, but you should find a person, a senior person who understands technology, but also understands how much it's going to cost and try to optimize that. And this function will remain necessary. And, and today, enterprises are adopting FinOps as a team. They are developing large teams and they are spending tons of money on this only to save money. They're spending more money to save money, right? Sounds crazy, but, but it is very, very essential. Spending small amounts of money to spin up a department will help you save millions of dollars. Now, there are multiple tools that are out there. That's where we talk about machine learning and artificial intelligence. So even the cloud companies, they have their own tools. For example, if you talk about AWS, AWS has something called a cost explorer. It's a module within your cloud that you have access to. So it gives the cost explorer gives you the, the state of your cloud consumption in real time, as in every second, what's happening, how much are you consuming? So it also uses machine learning and artificial intelligence built by, by Amazon in the backend to, to give you or to recommend strategies and say, hey, you're not using this resource. So you spun up this server, but you've used this at only 20% capacity over the last 60 days. Maybe you should downsize. And it also gives you a recommendation of what size you have to downsize. <coughs> there are tools out there that will look at technologies that are built, technology stacks and say, hey, this technology stack is <coughs> not the right technology stack because it consumes a lot of memory which is actually leaking and that causes great cloud spend, why don't you use microservices? So it recommends that as well. So there are plenty of third-party tools like Cloud Check, uh, Cloud Assist, you name it. Every um, you know marketplace, like the Amazon marketplace, the Google marketplace, you talk about anything, they have a lot of these tools, third-party tools, which, which you can buy, which will help you assist. These, will, these tools will only accelerate your maturity. If you want to do it all manual, you can, but it's going to take a long time for you to get there. And that's why AI and ML machine learning tools are there. You have your native, cloud native tools, but you also have third party tools that can help you. Now, some of the sources that can help you get started out here is look, look at from an AWS perspective, look at well architected framework framework there's a there's a segment or there's a section called cost optimization pillar it has strategies that will help you low low hanging fruits which will help you to adopt adopt these strategies day one in order to minimize your cloud spend and then there are a lot of blogs that is out there I mean, whether you are an aws consumer or a gcp consumer or an azure consumer there are so many people, there are blogs, there are, there are these uh, forums that are out there when you can, you can go and post your specific problem 
and people are there to help. That's the power of crowdsourcing today. Is uh, back in the 2000s, if we had an issue, I had to deal with an issue in my own enterprise. But today, it's all available because of social media, social and the crowdsourcing technologies that we have out there at our fingertips. We can say what problem we have, and more often than not, you will be surprised that the same problem that you're facing. Hundred other people would have faced the same problem, and they would have found solutions to that. And that's the way you implement it. Another step that you can take is there is there is an organization called FinOps. It's it's a independent body which actually trains people, helps people to educate them on financial cost spending for the cloud, and helps you know to train them on strategies to to optimize cloud spend. So you can reach out to them as well. What has enterprises mature? Implementing the FinOps cycle, be informed, optimize, operate, and then uh, continue the cycle. Inform, optimize, and operate, and rinse and repeat. Okay, develop uh, cost strategy, segment spend, think about Result in senses, savings plans, and collaborate with IT, with finance, with business, and with security, so that you have one cohesive piece that will help you to mature your FinOps strategy and reduce your cloud spend. We talked about three strategies, right? Crawl, walk, and run. Now, I'm just going to give you a glimpse of Next gen FinOps. How do you, from crawling, walking, and running, how do you start flying? Okay. How do you make FinOps fly? This is the next level of, of things where you use artificial intelligence based tools, machine learning based tools, predictive analytics based cloud spending tools, and develop something called FinOps as a code. So you have automated shutdowns of environments when you're not using them. Use um, uh, tools like Cloud Checker, Cloudability, etc. There are multiple third-party tools that are out there, which will, for a fraction of a, um, a spend, they they will help you save millions of dollars. Think about them. Think about automatic tag validation and compliance. This will also may help you, I mean, uh, cloud native companies have machine learning based tools like AWS has Cost Explorer that will help you in this strategy. And you can also use something called cost usage report. This is another tool that the native cloud companies have in different shapes and forms. AWS, for example, uses something called cost usage report or CUR which will help you to automate the process of you know reducing unused underutilized resources or deleting them so that you don't incur those spend so that in short friends was a journey of the cloud spend why we the cloud spend is increasing what is the systemic issues that that we face during this what are some of the strategies that we can implement to actually reduce 